Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A creepy discovery inside a gym tanning booth. Police say this man was violating people's privacy in a big way. I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. And tonight I'm teaming up with Local 4, Dr. Frank McGeorge. Watch as we put at-home COVID tests like this one to the ultimate test. Do they work? And what do you need to know before you buy one? I'll have that story coming up. Hey, Hank, and the mayor of Taylor is busted by the local four defenders. It's a story about unpaid bills, a fancy golf course, and abuse of power. Rick Soller's recent tenure as mayor has been filled with turmoil and allegations of public corruption. Yeah, he remains under indictment in a bribery case that saw federal agents raiding his home and Taylor City Hall back in 2019. Well, today, We've learned two of his alleged co-conspirators are expected to plead guilty to charges related to public corruption. Sollers is running for re-election next month, but has to do so as a write-in candidate because he didn't file campaign finance statements and had unpaid fines. Well, now the local four defenders have uncovered massive unpaid bills to the city-run golf course. So let's bring in local four defender Karen Drew with what she found. Karen. Well, Kim, the question is, is Mayor Rick Sollers using the city run golf course as his own playground and a way to raise money for his campaign without paying his bills there? That's the question I asked when I showed up recently at one of Sollers campaign events. The Lakes of Taylor, a gem for the city. On his website, it states the club has given the Taylor golf community the perfect place to satisfy all its needs. Apparently, it's also been satisfying the needs of the Rick Sollers for Mayor campaign. Take a look at these unpaid bills. One from July of 2020, another from June of 2021. Both for the Sollers leadership pack. According to a recent statement, Sollers campaign owed more than $13,000 to the city-run golf course. Insiders within City Hall telling me they were aware the mayor wasn't paying the bills, but didn't feel they could speak up on his abuse of the city-run golf course. This was the scene last Friday when I showed up at one of Rick Soller's campaign events. I understand that there was some events that you held at the golf course and there's some outstanding bills there. And I'm not 100% sure I'd have to check with my okay. campaign finance treasurer. Okay, why would it not be paid if it wasn't? Because we've got records here from the Lakes of Taylor that say you have an event in June and July and you owe more than $10,000. Uh, that I'm not sure of. I would just have to check um, unless if, as long as we have the invoice, I would have assumed that's been paid. Three days after we confronted the mayor, the local Ford vendors checked with the Taylor City Hall and the mayor's golf tab was paid. It's on me. I mean, we owed it and we uh, paid it yesterday. I mean, that's obviously the big question. You're running a city. You've got a, a bill for over 10 grand that you didn't pay and you didn't pay it until I brought it to your attention. Might make people wonder how you're running the city. Well, mistakes happen. I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not making excuses for it, Karen. I, uh, I, when you brought it to my attention, I have, not, I have not seen that bill. That's what he said. Mistakes happen. Well, the mayor went on to say he is up to date with all the other bills. Of course, we're checking into that as well. I did call the golf course also to find out why these bills were allowed to go unpaid for so long. I'm waiting for a call back from them. I'll let you know what I find out. I bet. All right, Karen. Other news tonight, University of Michigan President Mark Schlissel will step down as president in June of 2023. That's a year before his contract expires. School's Board of Regents will immediately launch a national search now for his replacement. It's unclear what will happen if the board finds a suitable replacement before 2023. But the Board of Regents has been deeply divided over Schlissel's performance. He came to the university back in 2014. President Biden in Michigan today to speak about his Build Back Better agenda. The president trying to get support for a bipartisan infrastructure bill and an additional multi-trillion dollar bill, which is focused on human infrastructure. The larger bill would invest in higher education, child care, housing and climate change. President Biden says he remains optimistic that both bills will pass. These bills are not about left versus right or moderate versus progressive, or anything that pits Americans against one another. These bills are about competitiveness versus complacency. They're about opportunity versus decay. They're about leading the world or continuing to let the world pass us by, which is literally happening. The president's visit did draw protesters, many of them supporters of former President Donald Trump.
A St. Clair County man is arrested near the U.S. Supreme Court in Washington. Police identified him as 55-year-old Dale Paul Melvin from Kimball Township in St. Clair County. We know that he was parked in his SUV near the Supreme Court. Officers tried to get him to leave and he refused. In fact, his quote was, time for talking is done. Well, that's when U.S. Capitol Police set off what is called a flashbang to take him into custody. So the investigation into what happened continues. Well, this man is facing charges after someone found a hidden camera in a private area of a local gym. Police in West Bloomfield Township say Stephen Hanna was spying on multiple women. As Victor Williams reports, investigators believe there may be more victims at other gyms. On the surface, this appears to be a clean cut regular guy, but police are saying this man is accused of doing some very inappropriate things. None of the women that we spoke to wanted to go on camera, but they're telling us that they never thought they would have to worry about being filmed up above. There's minors that go in there. That's just the sad. It's nasty. It's disgusting. Stephen Hanna is accused of filming multiple women at a tanning booth at a West Bloomfield Township gym. Police say it was done by Hanna taking out his cell phone, placing it on the ceiling to capture video of any ladies getting a tan below. Violation of privacy. It is. And it's just crazy that there's sickos out there like that. The allegations date back to 2018. So far, Mr. Hanna has been charged with 10 different felonies for victimizing 10 different women. Deputy Chief Court Lawson says the West Bloomfield Township Police Department had to go through a lot of digging to find out what Mr. Hanna was up to. They were able to go into the phone, find an app that this individual used to hide uh, photos, videos. Many of them were also deleted and we were able to get those back. At this point, police aren't saying which gym this happened at, but we know Hannah was not an employee and just a regular customer. Other agencies and surrounding communities are now investigating to see if there may be any other victims elsewhere. Uh, right now, there's 10 victims that we know about, but as the investigation evolves, there may be more victims out there. You really just have to watch your back and that's kind of that's kind of sad. In the meantime, police are now asking women at gyms to be aware of their surroundings. Mr. Hanna, however, is due back in court on October 28th. Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor, a student at Fraser High is pulled from class and arrested for bringing a gun to school. A handgun was found inside the backpack of a still unnamed male student after another student thought they saw the weapon and reported it. In a letter to families, superintendent says no threats were made against students, staff, nor the community. Student no longer allowed on school property. As a precaution, the school will have added police presence for the time being. Well, far too often we've seen innocent people inside homes and vehicles hit by bullets from yeah. drive-by shootings. Uniquely tragic when a child is hurt or even killed, which is why lawmakers are considering a new bill that would increase punishments in those circumstances. Local 4's Larry Spruill joins us live. Larry, you spoke to a father who knows the pain of, of this senseless yeah. violence. Well, good evening, Kimberly, and that father still dealing with the loss of his two-year-old son. He was shot and killed back in June of this year. Now, father says that he is very pleased that there is some type of a bill or a legislation that will be presented. And he says that he backs it 100 percent. I don't really have sympathy for anyone who, who kills an innocent person, let alone an innocent kid. Strong words from Brian Christian Tuesday. That's because his two-year-old son, Bryson Christian, was shot and killed while riding in the car with his family back in June on Interstate 75. Detroit police say someone drove by the family's car and started shooting, hitting little Bryson and his older brother. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's been tough um, for the most part, just trying to you know, get back to everyday life. It's stories like this one that has legislators in Lansing calling for stronger consequences with those committing drive-by shootings. Leaders in Lansing will introduce a bipartisan four-page bill package called Messiah's Law that would increase punishments in drive-by shootings. Messiah was a three-year-old boy who was also shot and killed inside his home in Flint, October 2020. I, I believe it needs to be an assertive effort and emphasis just on those those things like you said sh you know shooting in houses and shooting drive-by shootings in cars now this proposal outlines these punishments for anyone who shoots a minor while firing into a building vehicle or crowd 
a 30-year maximum sentence or $30,000 fine for shooting and causing any injury to a minor, a 40-year maximum sentence or $50,000 fine for shooting and causing serious impairment of bodily function to a minor, and lastly, life without parole for shooting and causing the death of a minor. And right now, first degree murder and placing explosives with personal injury are the only convictions that come with a mandatory sentence of life without the possibility of a parole. We're live tonight, Larry Sproul, Local 4. Okay, Larry, thanks. We are searching for some sunshine on this Tuesday. Let's check in with Paul. Well, you know what? If you live in the thumb, you haven't just had a little sunshine. You've had a beautiful, beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Now, there's a lot of cloud cover to the south, so we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about the prospects for any sun tomorrow. We do have a dense fog threat tonight, and we have a holiday weekend coming up. We'll talk about all of that straight ahead. At-home COVID tests promise to be safe and effective, but I couldn't believe what I found inside some of these products. Tonight, I'm working with Dr. Frank McGeorge, and we're putting them to the ultimate test.